Hey guys, this week on the Awesome Cast, we're going to talk about iOS in your car, waving your fingers around with this new ring gadget, and how the Bro app is going to help uh, Dutters with her harem of men. All that and more, Awesome Cast. I'm getting awesome, you're getting awesome, we're getting awesome, yeah, that's what I said now. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast. Mike Sorg here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA, at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Ready to talk tech, talk geeky, have some fun here for the next eh, hour ish. Uh, we're, of course, here live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us in the chat room uh, over there uh, every Tuesday night uh, around about 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time, kind of, sorta. Uh, with me is the Dutters in the studio. Hi, guys. Hi. You're back. You weren't here last week. No, no, I was not here. But I'm back. I'm better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshed from the awesome. Also back with us uh, via the Hangouts is John Chichilla Etchilla on the Twitter. That's me. And I'm a little upset. I'm, now I show up. Dutters doesn't show up. I don't show up. I, I mean, I feel like uh, if I'm on the couch, she won't She won't come in. It's weird. It's Take weird. Take the hint. <laughs> <laughs> and of course... Uh, Aside from uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com, you can also join us. We're over at AwesomeCast on Twitter, AwesomeCast on the uh, Google Plus and Facebook. Uh, you can drop us a line at AwesomeCast at sorgatronmedia.com. And uh, you can find audio and video versions on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker. I'm sure some other places, too. Um, so uh, with that, let's get started with our awesome thing of the week. Chilla, you got something. I do have something. Where'd it go? <laughs> So I, I, with my addiction of mobile tech, um, I have, make sure I get it above the banner. Um, it's the new, and I never pronounce their, their company name right, so I'm sure they'll contact us and tell us. Um, I think it's, it's Adonit? I don't know, A-D-O-N-I-T. It's their new Jot script. So it's a Bluetooth stylus that uh, works extremely well with any kind of iOS device. Um, and it actually, because it's Bluetooth, it can do palm rejection. It can figure out pressure. Um, it can do, it can, it, it slices, it dices, it, it writes. <laughs> it just not with ink. Um, but I, I've actually found it really useful because unlike most of the other, um, is it styluses, styli, whatever. Sure. Um, <laughs> um, it actually has an extremely, extremely small, um, fine tip to it. It's it's not the disc like some of their other like, other like um, this one. Jot devices. Oh, there's um, actually exa- huge, there's actually an example sorry. on the screen of the little disc. I remember you showing it off before on the show too. Yeah, this has an. I mean, this is a, pretty much the equivalent of a, of a ballpoint pen, mm-hmm. which is it actually makes it comfortable to write with. And the the plastic disc on their other device, if you're in in a quiet room taking notes. You can kind of hear the plastic against the plastic screen on your tablet, making like this click, 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 click noise every time you lift and, and as you're writing, um, which happens way more often than you think it would. Pretty much every word to word or letter to letter, you're, you're kind of tapping along. Um, so this device is really nice. They do have, um, I included a link in the show notes too, um, all their apps that are, that are jot ready. Um, so there, there's obviously because it's Bluetooth, you actually have to, there, the app has to be enabled to leverage the Bluetooth side. If the Bluetooth, if, if it's not jot ready, it won't be able to do things like the palm rejection and, and pressure sensitivity. It obviously will still write on the screen, but if, if the minute that you rest your palm on the screen, it's going to leave lines and draw and, and kind of alter your drawing. Um, so this, that's one thing that I really like about this brand is they have they have a lot of um, technology that they've included and their SDK is free. So if you want to include their technology in your app, all you do is send them a request and they send you all of the stuff you need. And from what I hear, it's throw a couple of lines of code in your code and all of a sudden you can use their technology. So I'm pretty impressed with the device so far. It does, unlike the other one that has kind of a dock that recharges it, um, this one actually has, you unscrew the top, and it has a AAA battery 
uh, Sorg, I think we were talking about it before the show, you know, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Mm -hmm. You don't need an extra USB device to bring along with you when you think about it. If you have a tablet and you're not carrying something that's USB, that has a USB port on it, um, you'll, you'll be okay, but you will need extra AAA batteries. So I guess it'd be nice if it was both, like put a AAA battery in there, but then also be able to recharge that battery via your USB would be even cooler. I um, mean, this is actually also backed, I forgot, it's, it's actually backed by Evernote, which I find odd because they tout how it works with Penultimate, and Penultimate doesn't have the API set for palm rejection, but it has pressure sensitivity. So I find myself not wanting to use actually Evernote's app. There, there's a couple apps I really liked. Uh, Good Notes was one of them, I think. Notability might be another one. Um, but yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed using it for, I've been using it for about a week now, um, and I really, really enjoy using it. I'm trying, Note Shelf is one that I've used. Um, I've tried Penultimate and Good Notes. So yeah, go out and buy it. And I included the link in the show notes for the Amazon site, because I actually ordered it on Amazon so I could get a two-day prime. Go check that out. We'll have the link over there over on our uh, show notes over at awesomecast.com. Um, and you, if you click through there, you support the show that way. And I, I still need to get a banner up there, too. Um, you definitely need a banner because I'm going to be ordering all <laughs> kinds of child things. You know, um, and, and I know, I, and I had Chachi. Chachi actually is Chromecast. Is, I probably just came by now. I know it's due today. And he's like, hit me up and say, hey, what's your link on your site so I can buy a Chromecast? <laughs> so I'm like, ah, I'll go find it. <laughs> so, but yeah, we'll, we'll be uh, work on trying to update that here as soon as we have any time to do that. <laughs> so, and, uh, awesome. And I, and we were talking about my audio. I'm actually using the Bluetooth um, that I reviewed. I think it was last week. Okay. The era. So, it, and it's been, it's been working amazingly well. And there's a, a British woman that speaks to me. It's not She's bad. It, it, it's not. It doesn't sound too bad. It, it does sound like like it, it sounds like you know kind of room Mikey, like you're getting mm -hmm. a little bit of echo. So okay. I mean, not horrible. Cool. But daughters, what do you got? I got a ring. Uh, congratulations. Mm, no, sorry. So, oh, this one would be way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> what this is is um, it is a new. Uh, uh, there's been a few um, at the conference different places um there is a new ring essentially that controls either by bluetooth or through a hub or your wi-fi and essentially or ir capable and it passes it on to the device what it is with small movements um if you actually look at the other video the other link okay you'll be able to see that it's it's just one small ring that you keep on your finger and you can connect it to pretty much anything your tv your lights your they show it on your phone you actually can pay with it it uses the GPS in your phone or the iBeacon to see where you're at, and you can pay with it using check marks and little things. Um, it's all just finger movements that are uh, programmed into it, which is pretty darn awesome. It's a Kickstarter. Uh, right now, they're up to $455,000 in the Kickstarter, um, so it's pretty much pretty well backed. Um, if you start at like the $165 sponsorship level, you will be one of the first people to get it, and they're expecting that to be July 2014. And funny, because I read in an article that they, they mentioned that that would be good for summer weddings. So instead of just the regular ring, you could have a fancy, fancy ring. So you can give one of these rings mm -hmm. while doing your proposal with Google Glass on, because yeah. I know that's been a thing over mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks. Um, wow. So this, this that's a nice, like, low-maintenance gesture mm -hmm. kind all, of situation. It's, 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 it's all basic, just check marks you know just those little teeny motions with your finger they're able to feel the vibration and just the movement of, movement of that and there's going to be a separate kind of same with like google glass a separate almost uh, app store for them so they're planning on having a bunch of different apps go along with this too so you're gonna have a lot of different uses for it one just being really cool and being able to just direct things with the you know go over there turn my tv on turn my lights on <laughs> but just flicking your finger barely any work <laughs> well so for uh, and, and that completely has me interested so now i'm out on their See? site looking around so, so like the the light switch and the, that kind of stuff how does it integrate I, I'm, I'm wondering if the you're... light switch is ir like an ir sensor would be okay. my guess because i mean it connects or are they gonna 
are they going to have to have someone develop for that to actually work? Because I'm interested, because if you pledge 2500 or more, mm-hmm. you get the ring and the software development kit mm-hmm. with early access to their APIs and direct access to the support team. So I'm guessing they're expecting, it'll be interesting to see out of the box when people get it, how many of these things it does, and then how, are, are they being a pebble where they're expecting, you know, we're, we're hoping people develop software for this. So so this thing, it's saying it's going to work with Glass. Mm-hmm. I imagine you can roll in the API or something like that. And we've talked about it in the past, like there needs to be another input for Glass, right? Like we, we've imagined like a Bluetooth keyboard or something. And, and the videos were showing really good, like, you know, the gesture, you know, kind of typing situation mm-hmm. that would be amazing for responding with class because like the biggest problem i have with it is I, the only way i can respond is by voice so if i'm on a train bus in a crowd of people it's a little awkward to do that it's a little awkward to you know respond to something that that happens on my glass um or add a you know uh, a caption to something or anything like that now it is going to be a little weird to be doing you know finger motions in the air but you're already wearing glass so you're already you know kind of sticking out um but that's that could be a nice halfway point so awesome yeah i think it'd be much much less strange looking than a lot of other motions different you... levels of strange looking. <laughs> yeah right? I, I think not that's going to be the interesting thing is is what we accept as normal now in public versus what we accepted before in public as acceptable voices well, and motions. Well, that's changing and... all the time. I mean, we're used to blue people talking on the Bluetooth all mm-hmm. the time, right? Mm-hmm. Like Chilla over there. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking now that you'll if, – if you're in a large – if you're seeing a large group of people with your Google Glass, now you can point at the person that you wanted to do facial recognition with. Could you imagine pointing and like taking pictures like this <laughs> instead of like yeah. you graduated in 1992? You you were arrested for it. <laughs> that would be fantastic. That'd be good. That'd be good. Very very targeted. Um, well, I got something a little different. This was a uh, I was trying to figure like how tech kind of affected me in the last week. And actually, I'm amazed I didn't bring this up on last week's show because I think it happened on Monday. But I've had some car issues in the last week uh to one point where i i thought i was gonna have to get towed and uh, we have geico and we have roadside assistance they've always been really good uh about stuff like that not to be an ad for geico because oh my god those painting ads on hulu are freaking me out but i did use and we've done this before is use their um their app and you know they've actually talked about a lot on the commercials how you have your you know here's my id information stuff although i do have a problem with that like your registration and everything pop up on your phone. I have a problem with handing an unlocked phone over to a police officer. Because now you mm-hmm. just let them, now it's kind of, they can do whatever with them, right? Uh, in the vein of, you know, trusting law enforcement. Um, but, and we've used it before, you just hit a button, it goes ahead and calls, uh, uh, you know, assistance for the accident and everything, or, or whatever, roadside, whatever you need. Um, but now it does it without actually calling a person. Um, so I pulled it up and, and it actually goes through a thing and and you get a little readout and I'll see if it actually shows a picture of that in particular. Um, they actually, it is nice because they do give you an accident guide of, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do this? Did you take a picture of their ID card or something like that? Um, but in this, it, it, it just popped up a, uh, where are you or, or, or what happened? And I put, you know, minor accident or something like that. Need assistance, need towed or, or flat tire or whatever it is. Um, and it, it says, uh, somebody will be with you in 60 seconds. Somebody didn't answer after a while. So it said, uh, somebody will be with you in two minutes. So I'm sitting there watching the thing, you know, um, and it says, uh, John, whatever is going to, uh, handle your, your case. I'm like, Oh, okay. Uh, it comes up in another minute and says, um, so and so, and it gives you the name, address, and phone number of the tow company. Uh, will be with you within the hour. And at some point along there, it said, "Do you want me to use your current information at the phone?" And the GPS is given off, um, and it tells you to say, "You know, give me a cross street," and it pulls up the address it pulled up to make sure it looks kind of accurate, uh, and any other information. So. Especially in a you know issue like maybe you were just in an accident and now you're going to call this person and try to explain everything that happened. Instead, you don't have to do that. 
you know i'm a big person where i select what places i get my pizza from from do i have to actually talk to a person you know and this is kind of another case of that and just doing it on your phone so i have to give a lot of credit to geico and how they've really really fleshed out uh what this app does and it seems to be improving all the time um which i probably shouldn't be aware of that uh except for the fact that i have issues so many times with cars and that need insurance help uh so it's kind of like a you know if you're in that situation it helps you out um and i and i wonder if other insurance companies are really kind of taking this on um as well as geico might be so um wasn't there's there was a commercial and i don't know if it was geico and it was it was interesting because i always pay attention to what cell phones people are using in commercials mm -hmm. the woman had an htc one and she was taking pictures of her car and the son is standing mm -hmm. on the opposite side of the car taking and he has a nokia phone mm -hmm. uh, windows phone and he's talking about you know just so you know so and so has an app that you can take pictures and upload them right away for any of the accidents you're in and then and i think I go to she's like i'm already on it and then she goes but you can explain to your father who's pulling in the driveway what happened but i, I don't know if it was geico or if it was like state farm i know state yeah. farm always has the it was state farm because it they kept kept switching the the kid's voice to oh. the, the guy's deep voice and it, mm -hmm. it wasn't the typical accident forgiveness or um, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Not that this episode is brought to you by State Farm because it's not. Um, but the and then a person shows up, and then I have blah blah, blah insurance. Some person come help me, and it's like a grandma. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think State Farm just recently did something kind of like this. Yeah, I think everybody's jumping on, but I mean, Geico, I think it had a head start in a lot of this stuff. Remember, like a lot of their early campaigns was we'd have this commercial. Now we have a game app for you can download for free <laughs> of the pig doing something I don't know or caveman whatever. Um, like they've and also they have so many crazy and weird and different commercials you keep forgetting they're all Geico. Boots That's... and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. The pig <laughs> when he's laying by on the by the pool. Is that on. the one that screams "We" in the van? Yeah, it's the same pig, but he's yeah, by the yeah. pool. Okay. He's singing boots and pants and. It's very upset when people realize he's a pig and make bacon jokes. Oh. Pig in the blanket. Anyways, there can't all be winners. Um, so, yeah, not terribly as exciting, but, you know, handy when you actually have a real-world world problem situation happening. By the way, Automatic would not tell me what was wrong, but it was, like, my battery and my alternator. But that apparently doesn't have a service en engine light. I haven't had anything happen that's a service engine light. I've had every other emergency light come up in my dash, except for the one that will actually read out a code that my app will help me with. Uh, side note, actually, Automatic is getting a lot of features. I haven't looked into them. Uh, we talked about this months ago. Automatic's a little, I, I like to call it the Fitbit for my car, and I like to see that other people are too. Uh, it goes in your OBD port um, and uh, reports information about your mileage, uh, beeps at you when you're going over 70 or, or, or brake hard or anything like that, things that are going to lower gas. Um, they're adding social features. Um, so <laughs> we're going to look into that and hopefully report back on that uh, soon. So. I was going to say, as far as my, I have insurance, mm -hmm. and they do a similar thing with the, the reporting. They also do, um, I noticed that they have gas prices on there, too. And I think they have nearby, mm -hmm. looking at it right now, because since all their stuff's online now, it's not even, they're very much, they're touting a lot of it as mm -hmm. being very much handy and Just, mobile. And a lot of them do gas prices. Waze will actually do gas prices, too. I like Waze um, for gas prices. And I, I haven't really... I haven't really like tried it out because usually I'm like on the way to something. You know, Waze is pretty good for gas prices. AAA is clunky in their mobile site because I've tried using them for gas prices and it's just a little mm -hmm. bit clunkier. Waze might be a little bit off. I, I, I've had times where I've gotten there and it's it's a little bit off, but it's not nothing terrible. But like I said, and I can't AAA's... imagine it being you know accurate all the time. How do you get to it now? They kind of changed the interface a little bit on Waze. So like, did you just say gas or something? Uh, I think it just popped up before. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I was gonna say just like I did a search, and there actually no, actually gas, and it pops up a bunch of places with prices beside. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but um, yeah, there's a whole list, and then you you hit the thing. It says, uh, cheap. Actually, the three cheapest places, and uh, one mile away, one point two point three mm -hmm. miles away. I click it, it'll send me over to it. Waze is always interesting because like like 
it's the one that has ads. Mm -hmm. Like you're driving and and like you know where all the Taco Bells are That's and the, the Dunkin' best. Donuts <laughs> and stuff. Like it happened on the way home yesterday, mm -hmm. and it's like uh, there's something at Taco Bell. Drive there, and I'm like, I wonder if my carpool buddy will mind. Um, <laughs> it was interesting when I had the songs. Mm -hmm. when, you, when I don't know if you've noticed that. Whenever they were, I, I know Eminem was one of the one of the guys mm -hmm. that was involved. That, with that. confused me because I'd see the E in the corner, and I'm like, "What's over there?" You know? Yeah, I was like, "What's um, that E? I don't know that." Yeah, exactly. Or I'm I've seen a lot of car dealerships. I think, um, you know, odd stuff like that. Um, excuse me, I'm pulling up the WWE app because there's a live show right now, so I'm trying to keep up for the later podcast. So this has been uh, I'll update. It wasn't my awesome thing. I didn't want to do it two weeks in a row. Uh, <laughs> but it works for the most part now. Um, one weekend, they finally fixed the Xbox last night, which is kind of lame. But it looks amazing on the big screen. Um, well, I'm what actually... Be, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh. What, what would be really cool is if the, the gadget for your car knew how much gas you had left and then could calculate... Like when the last minute of running out of gas would occur and then correlate that to being able to find the cheapest gas price within your yeah. range. Well, some cars already uh, do that, too. Like as far yeah. as like miles left until fill up. Mine does, well, mine does miles left and mine will actually come up and say, you're running low on gas. Do you want me to find you a gas station? Hmm. Yeah. But but what I wanted to do is actually be more cost efficient. Mm -hmm. and figure out when I'm running low on gas, what is the the lowest gas price in the range that I can travel? With that sounds like, and that sounds like, like a car thing combined with like a Google now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then I think that's, you know, that's what we're kind of leading to. Or, and I think it's coming up somewhere here in the show CarPlay. <laughs> well, two things related to that actually. So, so well, let's talk about CarPlay for a moment. But there's another Siri, Google Now ish thing coming from Microsoft um, that I think has finally got some uh, real details. I know we've been hearing about it, like kind of rumored and stuff uh, behind the scenes for a while. So, tell me about CarPlay, Chilla. So, CarPlay is Apple's answer to your in-car um, GPS. It's pretty much your tablet in the car. It's actually pretty interesting. So it's obviously good. They're going to have apps, um, much like, so Spotify. You'll be able to interact with your car via your cell phone and or in-car connectivity. I'm sure sooner or later all of our cars will become mobile hotspots anyway, and we'll just stream Internet to everyone as we drive by. But it, it it's supposed to bridge the gap, and it's also supposed to keep – it's supposed to allow more capabilities than I was going to lead into this. There was, there was a link that, um, that, that, that Mikey had as well. But um, it, it's pretty much like an in-car assistant that's mm -hmm. supposed to kind of be more user-friendly. I don't know if you've used any of these systems. Like in, in my car, it's like you can change the radio station, but you have to hit a button, and then you actually have to know, I think, actually the – the number of the station or whatever. So it, it's not the best interface. Yeah. I, it seems like Apple's going to put their stamp on it. I, I rode with somebody on a, on a road trip to Philly. And I think it was a Mustang with one of these built in. And I thought he was going to wreck the car. Um, and that's, that's, that's actually it's... Microsoft and Microsoft. Or yeah. Ford uses Microsoft. Ford is leaving Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing they're going to put QNX in. Which leads into the, the link that you just had up. So, from what I'm hearing and, and what they're saying today, is CarPlay actually relies on QNX, and QNX is a BlackBerry technology. Wow. Is QNX <laughs> and, typically in cars already? So, that was the big reason that BlackBerry actually bought QNX. It was kind of like a Linux, Unix company. Okay. And their operating system was actually built to be low powered it was it, it's extremely efficient and it's actually one of the things that was designed for was car systems um blackberry bought them because um of it being linux unix based they knew that they could get android apps on there mm -hmm. and also they knew that um they needed to come out with a tablet so they came out with the blackberry playbook yeah. the brand qnx that uh, 
well, then they said that no one needs a, a tablet because obviously no one bought theirs, so no one must need a tablet. But anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, so so yeah, it's it, it's actually probably one of the technology companies that BlackBerry owns that BlackBerry technically could continue to live off of because I, I think you're going to see especially in car technologies, one of the things that car technology has an issue with is updates and staying current. So most of the technologies you would have seen in a car are probably were developed five years ago and then put into the car, and now you're going to carry it forward for another five to ten years. So by the time you're done, it's a ten-year-old technology. Between this OS and another, like another vendor sitting on top of it like Apple, and then, um, like the the car we just got has a connection to I think it's actually Verizon based to get software updates and stuff like that. Now your now your your hard your software in your car can be updated over the air. Are you also watching the network over there? <laughs> No. Me? Sorry, uh, I just saw her do the guest chant. So I'm, I'm and Brian, Daniel Bryan's on my screen. No, we're not distracted at all. There's just a I was I was distracted by Twitter. Yeah, there's a lot of Twitter happening right now. Um, awesome. Uh, and this is of course uh, higher end cars from the looks of things. I'm seeing Volvos and and Mercedes Benz and and everything like that. So I mean, it's not like yeah, it's it, it's extremely high end cars to begin with. Yeah, and then I think. Um, Honda, Hyundai, there, there was a slew of cars after the fact. So, so eventually, then, am I going to get in my Buick? Yes. Good. I, I think, and, and maybe it's not necessarily Apple's exact, but you're going to get something like this. I think sooner or later, all cars are pretty much going to become standard mm. with something like this, because I think it's going to bridge the gap of looking at your phone. I don't know, there was that lawsuit that was just finalized in california where they actually say it's legal to look at your phone for a map um so i i think it's going to just become kind of a safety feature and that's how they're going to tout it so I, I think you'll see all cars having this sooner or later probably a little bit before they all drive themselves <laughs> awesome hey we had a couple of uh kind of recommendations and stuff um uh, tossed our way. Um, first of all, one was uh, uh, somebody. Somebody said the the grab the retweet of, of uh, a friend of the show, Christina Unger at Christina Unger. Um, this one is listen to Wikipedia, and it's at listen.hatnote.com. Uh, and I guess the idea of it is a visualization of edits on Wikipedia in real time. And you can see the bubbles popping up. And I, I guess this is just like the topics that are getting updated. And I'm presuming the size of, wow, Austria in Eurovision Song Contest. Just got a huge <laughs> pop. Um, so I, I'm guessing that's that size of the um, the updates, I guess. So um, here in recent years, actually, there's a, a readout of, of uh, all of them. Um, and, of course, the green circles are unregistered users, it looks like. Um, this is fun. I saw a list of X Men doing something. Uh, <laughs> Batman Arkham just got updated. Um, it, this is kind of fun. 2014 United States Men's Curling Competition. Robert Lopez. Uh, so go check that out again. It's listen.hatnote.com and follow uh, at Christina Unger on the Twitters. And we had another one. Uh, this one came from our friend Alex Cars out there in California. Uh, so this is another one called uh, appear.in, um, and if you want to check that out, you just, uh, and we'll give it a kind of a test here, create a room and talk together. So let's just do an awesome cast one on the fly here, because we do so great when we, when we, when we uh, demo things on the show live, right? Need access to my camera and microphone. Okay, I'll go ahead. Oh, be careful! It could cancel out all your other. No, I'm in my underwear. Take me back is an option. Connections. So here is my. I'm on my iMac here. So there's my video. Okay. I'm presuming it's getting my audio in so there. So many sorgs. Invite someone by sending a link. So so now if you, anybody and actually we got people in the chat realm, uh, uh, go into appear dot in slash awesomecast and I'll go ahead and actually copy that over to the Twitter, maybe, maybe, 
uh-oh, my computer just got real weird. And I'm following the unborn apple. And we'll see if that populates here. Um, so I guess this is just a really quick, maybe it's something we can use for our um, chats here. Um, but it, 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 these have been popping up a lot. I and mean, there's been a few people that recommended it. We had like Spreecast was brought up last week uh, with Hutch on the show, of course. Um, so so there's a lot of like Google hangout -y, real quick, let's throw in a video chat. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed at how easy these things are getting. I don't know. I don't know if there's a, an app version of that. If you hit a link, so. Um, but yeah, that was by um, Alex Cars at. Uh, I'll find his Twitter here. At a cars uh, K A H R S uh, for passing that along. Just the one-click video conversations. Um, that could be fun for just kind of. Um, um, uh, you know, quick conferences or something like that. Because I mean, like, I, I know with Google Hangout, like, I, li I like using it. Like, it works right here for what we're doing here. But it's hard to get people, oh, I don't, have, I don't know if I have a Google Plus account. And sometimes the calling doesn't work. Like, people don't get the ring through. Um, and, and you have to go, well, well try this page. <laughs> Maybe you'll find my, my invite. Um, so I just saw Twitter saying I need to use a Russian accent on the show tonight. Um, Wrestling Mayhem show is going to be a lot of fun, guys. Um, what else do you guys got in here in the lineup? I see Chili. You got one for XBMC. XBMC, and I, I think uh, we we touched on it earlier, Cortana too. Oh so yes. XBMC. Well, I can I can cover that real quick. So XBMC, if you're familiar with it, it's kind of the grandfather to Boxy or Plex. I was a huge fan of of XBMC. In fact, I ran it on modded Xboxes I had. I ran it on my Mac, on my PC. Um, I've actually been playing around with a um, Android client because they make an Android app um, for XBMC. It does a really good job with, with managing your media, whether it be uh, video, audio, um, photos, etc. cetera. Um, it does a really good job on, on a multitude of devices of spidering your network and finding every media um, clip or anything all over any drive that you have and then kind of giving you the capability to display that on a TV or on the PC or on or on a tablet. Um, they're coming up with a new release, which I, I their stuff's always pretty impressive. And I think when you look at things like Boxy, Plex, um, Roku, I think they borrow a lot of, of what they do um, from XBMC and XBMC is open source. So you have a lot of developers uh, collaborating and, and, and kind of thinking outside of the box of what should be next. And then, and then I think what you actually see is everybody else kind of picking up on this. Um, XBMC is pretty cool too because it's themable. So you can, you can completely rework the way and XBMC operates through their, through their themes, which, which has worked out well, um, when I had been using it on a bunch of modded Xboxes, I used it as a media center on every TV in the house for, for quite some time. Um, but it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty. It's a good thing to, to look at if you're interested in alternative media players. It's, it's actually based off the original X. It was originally XBMC Xbox Media Center, and it was meant for turning your Xbox Gen 1 into... A, a true media center. That's awesome. I, I'm glad to see that project still going. I've never really got into it. Mm -hmm. um, like, I mean, do you really need like a dedicated? Like, is this just like an app I can throw on my Mac or PC and it'll do the, do its job? It, it is an app that you can throw on your PC or Mac. If you have an old Gen One Apple TV, you can jailbreak that and throw it on there. If, mm -hmm. if I mean, it'll pretty much run on anything with an Intel or Beta or. Uh, What's the other processor RPC. on AMD ARM? Okay. So they, they compile for multiple processor types. So you, yeah, it'll, it'll pretty much run on anything. So like, like this like says it has Android. So like, can I just throw it on my tablet and it does it? Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's going to be fun. Uh, cause I, I've always been, I, I've always caught wind of this and kind of like, you know, when I'm looking for options, like when I was testing with like boxy and stuff like that for, you know, in-house things. Like, I feel like Chromecast and, and things like that kind of replaced the need for this for me. Um, mm -hmm. But it always seemed kind of like a little too hackery, 
you know what I mean? Uh, like it seemed like I needed to do a little more than just like put an app on it and, and, and it kind of worked. Like, but but again, yeah. it's been it's been years probably. Yeah, there the thing that I like about theirs is it does it goes the distance and well, pretty much reads any media type. So if you have DivX nice. files or BinQ files or or MPEG four or pretty much anything that's not DRM protected. It'll, it'll definitely be able to view it. And they support a multitude of graphics formats, um, audio formats. Some people like like different lossless formats versus um, MPEG encoded and compressed formats. So I don't know. It, it's always been a nice kind of media player. And once you have it set up and you point it to all of your drives and directories, you just drop files out there. It automatically finds them. Um, and then the UI with the theming, um, it's extremely simple to use once you have it set up. A caveman could do it. <laughs> oh, no. Did we really throw coming, back to that? Yeah. Come, come oh. in full circle. Oh. 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 Well, I'll, I'll skip next to uh, the Cortana leak. Thank you. So, so uh, Krauss will definitely be happy about this. Um, I guess uh, there's some now. There was a screenshot I saw that leaked yesterday. And now they're showing an actual video of Cortana in action on a Microsoft phone. Um, so this is Microsoft's answer to OK Google and Siri. So um, I guess when you run it, and I didn't get a chance honestly to, to, to read the, or to, to watch the video, but um, it'll ask you a couple questions, get to know who you are and then start just recommending things. I'm sure it's, it's powered by Bing. And I'm sure we'll hear a lot more next month at the Build Conference, because I'm hearing that this is gonna launch with Windows Phone 8.1. So uh, you're, I think you're gonna see a lot of news around Windows Phone 8.1 because it's gonna get Cortana, there's gonna be more, there's actually like phone theming. They're, they've taken what their users have said and, and they're really pushing the envelope with, with their release. And they've also kind of promised, unlike the 7.x 7, 7 Windows Phone version to the new current, or to 8.1, any phone out there right now that's been released, I think, in the last two years will definitely run it. So Good, good, because that was a huge problem the first go around uh, when they did the, uh, the updates and, like, really shut a lot of people out from the first generation of this. Um, Good. There needs to be another phone. They're doing, doing something. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how much traction they're going to get, but like, I still, I still stick with. I think this is some of the better, like, dumbed down phones. It seems you can do with the interface and everything. Well, it, I, I wouldn't even call it a dumbed down phone. I mean, they're oh. to the point. I mean, they have. I used to say, you know what? I, I'm not going to use the phone because they don't have uh, Instagram. There's no real yeah. Facebook app. There's no Twitter. Like they're. They've completely changed their methodology, and, and they're getting a lot of those apps out mm -hmm. there. I mean, there's mm -hmm. Angry Birds releases same day for well, Windows. I, I guess. I guess my definition of that is how much trouble can they get into this? <laughs> you know, uh, when mm -hmm. I, when I'm talking with somebody and they say, "Well, do I need to get an antivirus for my phone?" and I, the answer is yes, I think there's a problem. Yeah. I don't think you need it. Well, so keep in mind this is on a different processor. I, I'm talking Android, of course. Uh, okay. You know, I'm talking okay. Windows Phone versus Android versus iOS. And also okay. depends on where they're coming from. If it's somebody that's already you know has a new Windows 8 machine and is used to that, or if it's somebody like my grandfather who would decide who after two months says I'm done with Windows 8, get me a Mac. My <laughs> God, um, you know that's that's a different story, and he's not going to get a phone like this, you know, um, because he couldn't get get his head around that, you know. And there's a lot of people that can't, you know. Um, you can't really bridge that gap when everybody's using classic desktop, you know, to to, to the yeah. Windows Phone, unfortunately. So, um, I wanted to talk about something. This is actually something that got me. I love my coffee. And I actually read this as I finished brewing a cup of coffee on one of these sorts of machines. But uh, uh, I found an Ars Technica uh, article this morning. Uh, Keurig's next generation of coffee machines will have DRM lockdown. Now, uh, Chilla, 
you got you got me turned on to. I need to order another batch. I just went through my last <laughs> pod today, actually. Uh, you got me turned on to the um, um, uh, San Francisco Bay Coffee Company, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, with their nice eco-friendly little you know packets and everything like that. Um, and I know there's there's a whole new style of packet they're doing that actually is a little more eco-friendly for the Keurigs themselves. You have to get a special Keurig. Um, mm-hmm. And the patents run out on this thing, actually. So anybody can make a Keurig cup, a K-cup, you know, fake K-cups, you know, J-cups, whatever you want to call them. Um, I hope that doesn't mean something else. Uh, <laughs> now that I think about that. Uh, so now they're going to just loop everybody in and uh, so nobody else can make these kind of off-brand versions of it. Are you worried about your coffee lockdown, guys? I'm personally not. I'm sure either they're not going to get away with it. No one, I mean, I st- people will end up buying massive amounts of the old Keurigs just so they can use unlicensed cups. I'm more interested in a, because I have a, a Keurig at work, and we're not allowed to keep it at our desk, so I have to keep it in a public place. Mm-hmm. So I have everybody and their brother. I want Keurig lockdown where I can put like a passcode on it, and you have to know <laughs> the four digit pin to be allowed to brew a cup. Because I've cleaned that thing so many times. Mm-hmm. I wonder if, if, if this is what it has to do with. So I don't know how long you've had your, your Keurig or if you've ever had issues with it. About a Aren't year. At home. Yeah. What's that? About a year, and I haven't really had really mm-hmm. any issues with it. So we, we've had the one in the house for probably about two and a half years, maybe probably more like three. Um, and we've never had an issue. The one at work, I have actually had to take apart multiple times wow. and clean because whatever cups people are using there, the grinds are actually coming back up into the the water injector, and they're actually working their way up in reverse, Ooh. and then clogging the the the, the hose, wow. which it, it sounds a lot worse than it is. I mean, you could probably. Once you take it apart once, I would say that that first time probably takes you maybe 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then from there on out, it's probably like 10 minutes. So it's really easy to fix and it's really easy to clean. And, and if you go out and Google Keurig repair, I mean, it, it, the, the device was meant to be taken back apart and repaired. So it's not like brain surgery. I mean, it's as, it's pretty much as easy as changing Keurig cups in the, in the thing. You need, you need a screwdriver and a, and a um, with a with a Torx or Allen wrench type head on it, but it's extremely it's extremely easy to fix. But yeah, I want I want DRM lockdown on the ability to let someone brew. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's a video. Yeah, this is exactly how you take it apart if you're ever curious. Yeah. <laughs> they it's really- super easy, and none of the parts are like flimsy or, mm. or breakable. Mm-hmm. Like it's it, even on the inside, it's extremely sturdy. I I I, I believe like now I'm thinking about it. I think I have had it for a year because I think I got it for my birthday last year, um, and and it's been awesome. And, and of course, when I think Keurig, the Keurig is always the thing you find if you're at like a startup place and like they have the Keurig, you know, makers like oh I'm just like mm-hmm. a startup now because like you know my old job it was all the pot and everything you know so it's it's just I don't know. Um, other awesome thing of the week, if I can add, is the WrestleMania Scooby-Doo movie that just had an ad on the stream on the <laughs> WWE Network. Oh, my God. What are you doing? <laughs> why are you covering your face? Why, why Scooby-Doo? Why not Scooby-Doo? I, I, I don't get the correlation. I don't get the connection. I don't get the audience they're trying to get. Like Kids! But kids even, I mean, there's a lot other things they're into now besides scooby-doo that's we're excited about scooby-doo kids aren't excited about. yeah that's probably that's probably the thing too um so there's that <laughs> <laughs> awesome i'm gonna turn off the security go ahead we accidentally skipped over app of the week we did you did and it's like the best app ever oh my god i'm so sorry you're such a jerk <laughs> i don't know what, <laughs> that's not that's awesome why you're giving me funny faces over there <laughs> that's not awesome oh no Hi. What is it? Bro app. Bro app. Bro app. I'm this sorry. is amazing. Um, what it is, a couple guys from Australia who are only identifying themselves by their first names. 
because this app is considered slightly controversial. Not terribly controversial, just slightly controversial. What it is, is it's for guys to want to send nice texts to their, their lady friends and um, without putting much work into it. You can, essentially it's called a bro app because you're supposed to spend more time with your friend, your bros, and less time spending sending texts to your, your lady. And what it is, is it, it essentially, you can schedule these text messages. Um, you have an assortment to choose from. A lot of them like, hey, you, hey babe, what you up to tonight? Miss you, hey babe, I'm leaving work now. A lot of babes, I don't know, I guess. Apparently that's the cool pet name in Australia. Um, but you can personalize these out. So it's not necessarily you're sending a generic message. And it's almost, I, I took it almost as like a hoot suite where you can schedule out your, your text messages to your lady in, in this case. And, and there you can be like, oh man, there's gonna be a lot of problems with this. What if you're next to your, your girlfriend or whatever? Uh, there are actually safeguards built into the app where if in case your girlfriend was looking at your phone, it hides the app. <laughs> And also, <laughs> he's playing. He's playing Flappy, Flappy Bird. Bird. <laughs> but yeah, and more. Uh, I think more interesting than the intrusion detector is the Wi-Fi detector and yeah. contact detector. Yeah, it it, so, it it's able to tell if you're on your girlfriend's Wi-Fi, and also if you're in the process of texting your girlfriend. So it won't like generate these generic messages while you're genuinely having a conversation. It's, it, the technology is really interesting, I think, as far as what's going into this and how much is into it. It is $1.99 on the Google Play Store, mm -hmm. if you want to pick that up. Not on iOS yet. Not on iOS. It says coming soon on the site. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, they're probably having an issue getting our, getting approval access to the... No, probably, it's probably not that. It's probably getting access to um, contact, like that contact detector feature. Yeah. Apple's not usually willing to give access to call logs and message logs yeah so I, I don't I don't know how I'm sure there there's probably a tricky way to get around it mm -hmm. but it's not it's not something that is easy to do and as much as it's kind of gotten some flack it's it's almost kind of a neat app in regards to I am horrible at remembering dates that are beyond like things from other people someone might say oh I have a job interview blah 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 I have an appointment blah 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 on this day I could schedule out a text to a friend that says good luck on your test good luck on your uh, your job interview to show up an hour before this and look like a superhero, essentially, because I remembered this very important thing to my friends. And it, it just, you know, you already have so much to think about. Why should I have to worry about texting my girlfriend or boyfriend? I just love this app. I think it's amazing. I just got a text from my wife. It says, I better not get an automated text from your bro app. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the thought was, and, I, and my... Um, my friend uh, Adrian, my, my little roomie friend, and I were talking about it that if there should be another side of this app where you should be able to send automatic texts about uh, go stop at the store and pick such and such up from the grocery store or something, go buy this or just other honey do lists. You could automatically, I mean, it would kind of be well, the I feel like, uh, I mean, that's kind of what I use reminders on my mm -hmm. iPhone for. Like, and it's really good about context. Like, I had something where, like, uh, if I remind, I don't know what time I'm getting home, but I need to do, you know, email this guy when I get home like for something I did last night <laughs> sorry um and uh and I said okay remind me to do the call this guy when I get home and it actually knows about a block away I get the update and I'm like oh I gotta do that thing and I know to do it as soon as I get home um so I mean I like that aspect I think is already kind of there yeah you know you don't need an extra app for it but I think there's probably a lot of apps that do that too but um I like it. I, I, I think fun. I think it's funny. I think it's fun. I mean, I I, I know people um, in my life that would definitely could benefit from this and scheduling out several texts to several ladies at several times. <laughs> oh, I think we all know oh, somebody like this. So, so you're saying we should use it for lady management as far as multiple ladies. Hey, management. fellas, the lady management. Hey, it, it could be lady management, fellow management. Why can't I send it to my guys, my my harem of men? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Show title: Harem of Men. Um, <laughs> but I, I actually, I think, I think it's a great app. I mean, it's, it's take. If you look at a lot of the articles, articles, it's taking a lot of heat because, like I said, technology is totally changing the way that we interact with each other, and we are having relationships. And and it's you know, I, I don't have time to send sweet messages to my girlfriend 
So I'm going to just schedule them out in advance. I'm, I'm going to start on Sunday and schedule them throughout the week. <laughs> and then I'm set and ready to go. <laughs> Technology has been changing the way we communicate forever. I mean, from, yeah. from email or from, from written letters to email, I mean, or even the car from the Pony Express. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's just going to be a constant evolution. Oh, gosh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if we're going to see anything revolutionary, but what, what's interesting is when you forget to turn this off and you've broken up with the person. Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. That, yeah, that's a problem. They, they need breakup detection. <laughs> They're missing that component. Dear bro app, please add a <laughs> You take my Wi-Fi, but not my actual relationship status. Hey, but if you connect it with your Facebook. Oh, there we go. Taken Ooh, care yeah, of. Yeah, there you go. Chill, you got another one here. So I got one, and then mine's kind of like an off-the-wall. Probably not many. There's probably not that that many people that are that are interested in fonts. But one of the issues that I have um, rather frequently is when looking at like a PowerPoint or a Word doc or something along those lines that – the person put a specific font in it and didn't think to, hey, maybe I should send this out in a PDF format so everyone can see what it's supposed to look like. Um, they have their original embedded font. They don't have embedded fonts in there. This will actually let you install pretty much any font on your iOS device. Okay. So pretty much, and it actually integrates, um, it, it allows for open end functionality as well as um, Dropbox connectivity. So you can actually throw all your fonts that you would want to use in an app on your device um, in Dropbox and then open them in this app and it will actually install them on the device. Um, they're actually using kind of a, an around the way of doing it through configuration profiling, um, which will be interesting to see if Apple doesn't pick up on this and either A, block them or B, Sherlock them. But it, it actually is, it, I'm hope I, I I actually mailed myself a bunch of fonts, and I, I have yet to install them. But I'm hoping it makes my life a lot easier, especially the majority of time when I make a PowerPoint now or something for work. I every time, like there's a PowerPoint right now. I'm working on three PowerPoints, and all of them are above version 20. Well, every time I update the version and do, make a change, I also have to save it as a PDF, so people on mobile devices can look at it and it looks right. Um, so I don't know, I, I'm, I'm really, ex I'm extremely interested in this app and I'm hoping, um, both on the Android side and Apple side that they, they take a lesson from this and allow us to, to start using more fonts on, on the devices. Awesome. I, I can receive the text, uh, I haven't read this yet cause it's kind of a long article from Wired, uh, from my wife who, uh, and, and the, 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 the article was called, uh, Today's Apps Are Turning Us Into Sociopaths. <laughs> so there's one for the reader there. Uh, I'll probably look into that one. Uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, it was the apps that turned us into sociopaths. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. you just revealed that we've been sociopaths <laughs> like, all along. I, 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 I like to say that social media and the internet just, just reveals what, you know, people really are anyways. Yeah. Wow. Um, what else do we got here? Where are we, where are we at on time? Holy crap. Hoverboards? What? Is it a thing? Is it a I, thing? Is that the question? I, is what, it a what, thing? What's happening here? I don't, apparently not, because I got, a, oh no, I got, I had a 404 for a moment, so I thought it wasn't a thing. <laughs> what, what is this? It, Hover Tech says that they have the technology, they have ads, they have Tony Hawk using the hover hoverboard, and it comes in colors, and Mark Cuban is a backer now. Oh my god. It's it's a thing. Well, at least according to this website, it's a thing that they There's have developed. There's a video, and they have a DeLorean. Really? I, we did this. Is that Chris? That's not Christopher Lloyd. They did not. They got Christopher Lloyd. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> this be cannot be real. Uh, it's got to. <laughs> but if they got him to do it. That doesn't mean anything. Moby's in this. What? Hold on. Show me the board. Terrell Owens. Terrell, schoolboy Q, no, rap artist. Ooh. And it looks just like the thing. Wasn't it a Mattel thing? This is not real. This is not real. No way. So they're showing people hover. Uh -huh. This can't be real. I don't believe it. Go to the About Us. About Us? Go up top. Okay. 
They have a team. They do have a team. So five people figured this out. Yeah, if, and if you go down there, they're, they sound pretty legit as far as I... Al, Belief, Prescott. Does, have, any, have you looked into the tech? Like, how, how are they doing this? I'm... Magnets? <laughs> So, so this is the Google April Fool's joke of the of the century. It has to be. This is probably some Google back thing. I mean, to get Tony Hawk, Christopher, to get all these people to do this, take some backing in itself. And unless the, I, I, I don't know. I it. Don't get me wrong. I would. I want to believe I it. Be, I want one. That, yeah. I want to believe it, and that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. I want it to be real. But, but, I mean, I would hoverboard to work every day. Billy Zane? What? It's fantastic. Everything they have on here is just amazing. And the videos are, and the, the guests, and the people they have involved with it. And... Like, I feel like the videos are too produced, to a point, <laughs> as like a tech demo. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to believe about this. Well, I have to I have to watch these with the audio and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but even then, I don't I don't think I'm even going to be sure of that. So hoverboards maybe coming to you. I wow. Yeah. Uh, I want that to be my awesome thing of the week. If if, if they, they come out. One it's the day, awesome things of our lives. One day it might be. Um, all right, Sheila, uh, you got. It, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And looking at the articles, everybody's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. cool, cool. Chilla, we got some events coming up here, or I actually who put this one? Hi, in? I have an event. Is that you? You're in an event. Yes, yeah, I think she, oh, she. Yeah, she does have an event. I do have an event. I'm very exciting. Uh, it's your event. Uh, the, okay, I'm. I'm either really going to screw this up. It's either TED by Grandview Avenue or TEDx Grandview Avenue. I believe it's TEDx. Okay, that's what I thought, and I didn't want to mispronounce it. But I've yeah. always heard it as TEDx. Okay, good, because I've heard someone say, okay, it's a TEDx. Uh, Grandview Avenue, and um, it's actually, they've got a place now uh, in New Hazlitt Theater, and it's on April 26th, and what essentially the the event is, is there's it's localized for Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and it's Pittsburgh innovators, creative people, uh, dreamers who come in and speak to you, and essentially it's motivation, that this is what they're doing, this is what they're presenting to make their, to make Pittsburgh a better place. And they're starting to just announce some of their speakers uh, for this next year. And last year they had um, a couple of good guys, uh, Don Charlton from uh, Resumator, which mm -hmm. he, Don is a fantastic Apple guy. Apple Lab Company. Absolutely fantastic guy to ever talk to. And uh, John Fetterman, the mayor of Braddock, was mm -hmm. there last year. Mm -hmm. And then this year, a couple guys they've released already. Uh, Ian Rosenberger, Team Tossie, the water balloon fight. Okay. Yeah, Team Tossie. Um, he's, they do a lot of work with uh, Haiti and... Um, He's got. You have to look up Ian's things. He is fantastic. He is absolutely. There's a whole rundown on the uh, the website under speakers about him. Uh, he's working with recycling materials and giving jobs to, to Haitians, which is fantastic. So it's not just you're supporting and giving money. You're actually putting them on their feet and giving them a job. And and, and he was. I I didn't realize until I read the little spiel that he was on Survivor, and. <laughs> That was pretty cool. But um, he'll be speaking this year. And there's an after party at the aviary. Nice. Which I think is going to be pretty neat, too. Um, but tickets do go on sale on Monday next okay. week. And I will be picking one up for myself because I'm pretty excited about it. Anything that gets me motivated, I think it's just, mm -hmm. just awesome. Mm -hmm. And we have so many great people in the city, especially, who can just come in and say, I am doing this. And you go, you did this all on your own. And you you can do anything you can put your mind to, you can do. Because there's so many people who have done it, thankfully, in the city. Um, I actually got. Oh, sorry, God. Uh, I, uh, I actually got to attend. Ted's like when finding the Ted videos was really big for me because when I needed the motivational stuff, like mm -hmm. along with some other things that kind of got my got me off my ass to do some stuff. Um, and I was fortunate to attend. I want to say two years ago the TEDx CMU, and they actually just had one this past Sunday, which I was so peeved because they let their tickets out. On like the fourteenth, I had no idea, and I oh. and and I'm like so because I missed Grandview last, like I missed the window for Grandview last year, uh -huh. um, and every time I must have signed up for their newsletter like probably fifteen times because every time like it, it gets on my radar, I'm like, am I signed up? I don't remember. I'm gonna put my email in anyways because I didn't want to miss it because mm -hmm. it's like that window. Everybody wants in there, um, like like CMU, like you had to submit an application and prove you were worthy of it. You know, um, mm -hmm. and I don't know if uh, they're going to do the same thing with Grandview or anything like that. Um, but but uh, there's videos. I know. I think 
both Grandview and CMU, they, all these usually get videotaped and they're up. And, and if you go to TED.com or there's a TED app on your phone, on your Roku device, um, I think there might even be one on the Xbox. And you can just go through there and just look up like topics you're interested in. And it's not just like techno, like you know, world, big world saving things. There's medical things. There's um, um, a lot of technology and social media related things as well. Um, there's actually one video on there where I think it was the first demonstration of multi-touch on a surface that we know now in like iPads and iPhones and stuff. It's really, really fun stuff. Um, they're really inspirational, like you said. Um, go, go check all that stuff. So uh, TEDx Grandview, I believe .com is is the uh, Grandview Ave. I'm sorry, TEDx Grandview Ave as an avenue com for information on this one coming up mm -hmm. and of course uh tedxcmu.com i'm sure they'll have videos up from this last one and they have but both of them show previous years up there as well mm -hmm. so all really good talks i think i've listened to most of last year's grand view and they were pretty good so um awesome chilla what's coming up what is coming up um microsoft actually today released their Next update to Windows to manufacturing, which means we'll be all getting it next month. So now, sorry, you can be two versions behind on Windows 8 <laughs> on your home machine. I'm so afraid uh, because I have my <laughs> cast on here. It's just, it still pops up the thing every time for you to get 8.1. Um, you know, we should, I, I have an 8.1 uh, mobile device. When, eight, when update 1 comes out, maybe we can load Wirecast on it just to make sure it'll run. And then you can... I don't know. I, I need to stress test it. You know, I need to like load up one of these files and connect cameras and do desktop presenters to make sure it works. Works. You know. Let's let's do that. I mean, but there's no reason for. Is there really a reason for me to update this thing? It yes. works. And what? This is this isn't called like old cast. It's awesome cast. Well, the, my computer is awesome enough that the show runs. So, and, and knowing my luck with things. Hey, related to that, I don't think you have a list here, but Windows XP, uh, they're going to meet end of life, I believe, with updates April 6th, and I think March April 6th, 8th. April 8th. Um, I think, end of life. Then it must be um, uh, March 8th, you're going to start getting a pop-up that's going to remind you of that on Windows XP. Uh, I have a Windows XP machine right there, and <laughs> I can't believe, like, they keep dying off on me for some reason. Um... But uh, so I'll get the annoying pop up. But uh, I, I'm hoping I can get stuff working like on Linux with Desktop Presenter and just move stuff over to that because I have machines that are plenty capable. But if um, if I'm not going to get those kinds of uh, I don't know. Not that I really need the updates on those, but I don't want the annoying pop up to remind me. Yeah, I'm, I'm me. guessing you could definitely get get Linux running on there. Well, I can get. I know it'll run Linux, but can I run? The problem is the software that I have you in here in Hangout um, requires. Windows or Mac. I've been fiddling with a emulator, a Wine emulator, uh, mm -hmm. to try to get it working. I just can't get. I've been testing it on one of my laptops, and it just does not, just has not worked yet. Um, but maybe I'll just go ahead and actually, I got one sitting over there that kind of went on me. Maybe I'll throw a new drive in it, try it out. I don't know, because um, all I need is this the screen cap kind of thing, like we're doing mm -hmm. with you here, you know. Um, and I don't know. It's still a lot of testing. You know, I'd like to get off XP just to be on something made in this century, or I'm sorry, decade. Um, but I don't know. Uh, you know. Also, some uh, iOS news, right? Yeah, um, there, there, there's a claim that I, um, Apple is is doing an iTunes festival at South by Southwest, and the reason we don't have an app for it yet is because it requires iOS seven one. So more than likely, we're going to see it in the next couple of days. I actually keep looking on my device to see um, if it if it released yet. I'm sure it'll be all over the media. Is this finally um, gonna gonna uh, fix my springboard crash problem that happens at inopportune times? So I haven't since I've been on beta four, which is probably seven weeks old. Mm. I haven't had I haven't had a reboot or respring. Yeah. Yeah, it's been pretty annoying lately. Um, so, so yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that on but, on the device now, but, and we we both have the same device. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, but um, not I'm, as I'm annoying hoping. as my Android problems. I'm going to have to explain to you off air. 
Yeah, I, I saw that picture with the... Um... Yeah, that was weird. I, so my battery is either charged or needs to be charged, and there's no in-between. <laughs> Chachi tells me... I, t yeah, that's the Nexus 7. It's the, the new Nexus 7 uh, from this past year. Um, see, Chachi tells me I need to just reload Android. And I'm like, so I got to reformat? Like, I do Windows every six months? He's like, yeah, basically. Well, the good news is, the good news is when you reload Android, everything comes back automatically. Are my save store. games backed up? <laughs> because uh, if I, I lose know. my save games for Stealth Bastard Deluxe, I'm going to be really pissed. You're probably going to need to back those up. Okay, I'll have to figure out how that works then. And, you know, next week, next week for my awesome thing of the week, I'll cover, I actually found a really good file management app for Android that lets you connect to network drives on your network. Mm -hmm. So you can so back if you that thing up. you media or do something that you have a bunch of stuff on your home network, you can, you can use that. Awesome. Awesome. We'll check it out. Cool. So uh, you're at Chilla on the Twitters if people want to talk with you. Hit me up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I just saw the boots, boots and pants, boots and pants. Boots and pants, boots and pants, boots and pants. Boots and pants. Boots and yeah, that's cracked me up a couple times here, too. Uh, at Kay Dutters, talking, she's going to be talking about going to the Gathering of the Juggalos. Because <laughs> that just happened. Yes. I can't believe I bought a ticket last night. I can't believe I bought a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I probably it's, haven't been there since 2006. It's going to be an awesome cast and mayhem show live from the Gathering of the Juggalos. We're going to do something. It's going to be ridiculous. They have Wi-Fi. They have Wi-Fi. We're, we're a Wi-Fi enabled campground. I don't I know can't... if we'll have outlets, but we'll have Wi-Fi, wi I yes. guess. So. And Chilla, we're going to need to have to know all of the uh, chargers. Because we're going to have to like, stockpile these things so we can charge oh, our, I, our yes. devices. I can, yes. I can definitely help you out with that. You're gonna have to tell, tell, me what, uh, tell me what chargers and whatever is I'm going to need to last from a Wednesday to a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a there's one that they marked down on Newegg. I'll try to send you the link to <laughs> awesome. it tonight. It, it'll charge. It'll like charge multiple laptops. <gasps> like when you look at, and, and I think it was on sale from like it was like marked down from like two hundred dollars down to like twenty bucks on Newegg. Oh wow! Um, when you look at most of the chargers I have, they're like in the four thousand milliamp range. I think this one was like twenty eight thousand milliamp or something like that. Um, so yeah, I can definitely, in fact, if you, if you're careful with a couple of them, I can, I can, I can hook you up with a couple. I and I have that wi I have that Wi-Fi device too, that does the recharging that'll, that'll. Oh, that all in one thing. That was amazing. Other stuff. Yeah. So between that and figuring out how to water slash soda proof everything. Yeah. 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 That's going to happen. That's going to happen. So, yes. awesome. You can find out more uh, about us. We're over at awesomecast.com. Any, uh, any gadgets or anything we talked about tonight, we're going to have them all linked uh, to Amazon. You can uh, click through. If you want to pick up any of those, help support the show through the Amazon affiliate program. We're going to have linked up there. I'll have a banner one of these days. So you can put anything through there and support the show uh, that may or may not be uh, through Amazon. Um, and you can find out more. You can join us uh, live, actually, at live.sogatronmedia.com or just go to awesomecast.com. We get the links up there now every Tuesday. Uh, so with a big, big picture and button and all that stuff, so you can't miss us. You can join us here live on the chat um, around 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesdays. Uh, you can also drop us a line. We're at AwesomeCast on Twitter. We're AwesomeCast on the Google Plus and the Facebook. Uh, you can also hit up AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. Find us on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, and Spreaker audio and video formats. Big thanks. Uh, tweeting out all night, making uh, show notes all night. Mike Allen, at Mike Allen PR if you want to follow him um, on the Twitters. And of course, uh, with that, um, uh, thanks to our awesome chat room. They've been hopping all night. Um, thanks to our awesome Twitterers that have been cracking me up all night. Um, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Get it on.